Quick video to show you how to install one of these in Brighton in-wall Z-Wave smart switches. Uh, this is a part of a solution you might have for home automation in your house with a lot of these different controllers. You could use an Apple HomeKit controller, uh, Google, uh, Alexa, SmartThings. Uh, they'll all control these type of switches that are branded either in Brighton or GE or sometimes Honeywell. They're all made by the same uh, manufacturer. It's a company called Jasco. And uh, I think you might see that here somewhere on the box. Um, yeah, here you go. This is by Jasco. And uh, these, uh, these switches are in the second generation. They're pretty reliable. The older ones were not. They last three or four years and then they die. Um, but these ones, they're a smaller profile and they seem to have improved uh, the, the circuits inside. So when you get one of these, you're gonna get your instruction book here. That'll explain the wiring for you and I'll show you in this video. And then you're also gonna get uh, an almond covered paddle. You want to change that out to match in your house. Um, this is called an air gap switch. When you put it, put it together, this little plastic piece will go in the bottom. And then that'll actually be a pull-out switch like this that you can pull out. And that'll reset the switch, remove all power from it. So then when you push it back in, you'll have power back to the switch. They give you a white neutral because this is helpful to make sure that the neutral is connected from in your current house wiring and into the back of the switch. And here's the switch itself. Uh, they, they come with the white uh, paddle already installed, but that's easy enough to take out. You just kind of push on these little tabs on the side and it'll come right out along with that little air gap switch. My house uses almonds, so I'm gonna head and put this back in on, on the uh, almond instead. Well, let's go ahead and uh, take out the old switch and go ahead and wire this one up. Gonna go ahead and turn the circuit breaker off. Something you're gonna notice here that's important is this standard switch does not have a neutral. It's just got two black hots. So when we put in uh, the smart switch, like these are two existing smart switches, I'm gonna to have to pull back out of there the neutral and pull that wire nut out and run that extra white wire that they give us in the switch um, box so that that way we can have neutral running to the new one. So I can see in the back there, my neutrals, all these white uh, lines are all under this wire nut. So I'm gonna need to pull these hots out of the way and then grab this neutral and pull that out so I can put that additional wire that's provided in the, in the kit. I'm gonna connect that into there and then put it into the back of the switch. And it looks like the wire nut I, that, that came off of this, when I add this extra wire in, it's not gonna be big enough. So I got another one here that has a little bit of a larger hole. So I'm gonna ahead and try this to see if it'll thread on there easier. Yeah. So that's something that you might have to look at is upgrading or changing the wire nut for the existing connection so that you can get it nice and tight again with your additional wire attached. Now I'm gonna do my best to bend these back to where they came from and make room for the box behind the smart switch to go in there. Okay, now we've got our ground, our neutral, and our two hots. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the switch. Now when you're attaching these, they come with holes in the back for you to put those wires in and then there's screws here that actually will move a little clamp uh, when you tighten the screw on, onto the wires that you put in these holes. So you don't really wanna take these wires and then curve them around the outside here. You, you wanna use these holes to put them in there and then you're gonna to wanna to just slightly tighten on these because if you go too far, then um, you, it just kind of, it'll, it'll crack and it, this thing might even bust off. I've had that happen before, so. So go ahead and just set your, your these are your lines. It says line or, lead or load. Those are your blacks. Just gonna press that in there and then I'm gonna tighten it. And that's enough. It doesn't have to be crazy strong on that. It's enough for that brass contact to pinch on that copper wire there. Same thing for the next one. There you go, so that's those. Now I've gotta bring it around for my white. It's gonna go here in the bottom for neutral. That's good. And then lastly, up top, uh, it even has the holes for the ground. So I can use those holes right on the top for the ground. So I don't need to wrap this around the bolt like the older switch head. So no, don't skip on your neutral and don't skip on your ground. Smart switches are very finicky. You're gonna need those to have it work the way they're designed. So make sure you're wiring the ground and don't, don't just skip it. So now comes the fun part, trying to jam this, all this into that box. So then the last thing to do is to line up the switch and get it nice and straight and get the attaching bolts on the top and on the bottom set and tightened up with your screwdriver. Now, before I put on the cover plate, I'm gonna go ahead and flip my breaker back on so I can test that this switch uh, has a light and that it's wired in properly. And then go ahead and turn that breaker back on. And there we go, just flip the breaker and I can see that on this switch right now, I've got a blue LED indicator, so looks like it is wired So we got our faceplate installed and the uh, light switch is working. Uh, next step will be to program it so that it's attached to my SmartThings hub and can be brought into my automations and controlled remotely. And also I'm gonna adjust the uh, LED functionality so that it comes, I want the LED lights to come on when the switch is turned on, like in this example where the light comes on um, instead of when it comes off. I'd rather have all of mine, when everything's off, all the blue lights are out. Um, so I'm gonna reprogram that. I've got videos, two other videos that explain exactly how to add these to smart things and then also how to program these LED lights and to understand what this uh, air gap switch the bottom does. See when I pull that out, I've just taken power away from the entire switch and the light goes out. Um, so that's a reset for you. So go ahead and look at those other videos if you need to know how to attach this to your smart things hub. Uh, but otherwise, that's it. Uh, pretty easy to do these yourselves. It gets a little more complicated when you're talking about three-way switches uh, in your home, but they're also very doable. So, hey, I hope this video helped. And if it did, please give the video a thumbs up and that'll help other people find it as well. Uh, and you can subscribe and, and that doesn't cost you a thing, but it'll give you a heads up when I post new videos of similar topics. And uh, as always, I hope you have a great day. Take care.